Hello everyone, uh, just like to acknowledge, um, oh, okay, it's starting again. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'd just like to make an acknowledgement to country, acknowledge where we are in Yugambe country, and really acknowledge those that have been before us, what they've laid out, and um, how they've set the, the culture and the landscape to, for us to benefit now, and also to acknowledge those ahead of us. Um, my name is Barry and this is Tina and Rizal and this is Making Waves. And Making Waves is about um, <clears throat> speaking to other artists, creative people that, um, that speak, to the, uh, speak to us about their experiences of how they're making waves as an individual, in their business, in their creative journey. And today we have a special guest. It's Roselle. She is a professional editor and writer, skilled in poetry, script writing, academic writing, creative and commercial writing. And how she's making waves um, is, especially in the writing context, what I've discovered is that she's writing creatively in a in the legal context. Um, mm -hmm. And her ability to make arts performance and theatre really accessible to, to everyone. So I just love that. Um, she's just completed writing and directing at the Toucan uh, Club um, at Pip Theatre, and that's in Milton in Brisbane. If you ever get a chance to go to that, I'd, I think it's an amazing thing. It was only the first year this year, but um, yeah, I, I looked at the program, it's, it was incredible. Um, and she also hosts a regular art pop luck here on the Gold Coast, which I'm absolutely sold on. I went to the first one for yeah. my first time <laughs> the other week, and um, yeah, it was amazing. Um, so, and also, Roselle is an editor for a local boat magazine. Um, and what else have we got? Um, yeah, okay. yeah, that's what we've got for you at the moment. But yeah, amazing um, artist in her own right. Um, yeah. So, Tim, do you have some questions? Oh, yes, I do. Is it me? Um, we're going to talk about your stage play. Yeah. So, um, last year you, you were writing a story yeah. Yeah. about... That's what I'd like to know. I'd like yeah. to know how did you know? Tell us the story about it. Yeah, tell okay. us about the process of how you did it all, and then came to the event and your actors. Okay, well, that's a that's a, a long story. <laughs> that's a story in itself. <laughs> yeah. So um, last year, I was approached by a, a Filipino community group in Brisbane. Um, and they said that there's a theater called Pip that was hosting a Tukan Club Festival, which is a sort of a community type of festival where they allow independent, uh, how do you say that, uh, actors groups or performance groups to perform uh, on in their theater for that period of time. So that ran from November to December. So mm -hmm. it was. I think uh, lasted six weeks. It was a whole six weeks of performances. So uh, when she said that, uh, when I was asked by the group to write a script for a one-hour play, uh, I I didn't I didn't really hesitate. I just said, that, "Oh, that's a great opportunity, you know, to, to write something that's uh, that's about being Filipino." Although that wasn't a requirement by the theater. Uh, but because it was a Filipino community that asked me, then okay, let's let's sort of mix it all together. Um, so I had a uh, I had a picture of what the stage looked like and looked at what Pip Theater was all about. So all the details were there, and so I thought, oh, so it's a bit more relaxed kind of space. It's not really uh, hardcore stage acting where it has to be like you know how some some the way they do it is like for every move, for every word, you have a certain move. So mm -hmm. it, it, I realized that, that that Toucan Festival wasn't like that. It was mm -hmm. just about being able to tell your story. 
and so we were so I we went brainstorming so we had the brainstorming session online and that was how we sort of got into the story itself but yeah of course I needed them to tell me what 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 kind of stories do we want to tell during the during the play yeah. oh nice yeah. and then like you're talking about your actors or um, the group that helped you yeah well the group also so, okay the Filipino group actually had a how do you call that a branch where so this Filipino community group like all community groups would be really more of supporting the ones who come like the, the new arrivals and like sort of helping them uh, go around Australia or Brisbane or mm. or you know just giving help to um, Filipino people as well and you know whatever support because you know the common language it's mm -hmm. just easier and then you have all these gatherings so they organize these gatherings and parties and uh, events and mostly to celebrate our culture even when we're here and also to share that to the wider community so they established an uh, uh, a sep it, it's not separate it's within their group that was a theater group but everyone is like amateur, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a few would have experiences on stage, but most of them just really wanted to do something different and challenge themselves, you know. Like aside from dancing, if they dance, then then maybe they can also uh, go into yeah. uh, play. You've met, you've met. I've met them. I think <laughs> they're met. great. They're amazing. Yeah. So and you can see that they they all come from different backgrounds as well. Remember yeah, the pharmacy. <clears throat> yes, <laughs> we yes. were calling her the. Um, I will get back to that in a minute. Yeah. Oh, do you have a question, sir? Um, but I wanted to. Um, what was the story about? So the story is pretty simple. It's about a Philippine, a young Filipino man who came here as a migrant, and then, but instead of going back to, because it was around Christmas, so we were we were going to show this around Christmas time. So we thought that Christmas is a big deal in the Philippines. So let's maybe see something, uh, make them see something that has that element in the way the Filipinos celebrate Christmas. Mm -hmm. So, but it's not the story, it's not about Christmas. So he's already here, but uh, we thought, I mean, or originally it was just gonna be like, okay, Brisbane based, the setting will be here. In, in Australia, but I said, but it's so hard to go back to something Filipino if it's just based here. Yeah. So I thought, well, why don't we go do a flashback? And oh. we did a flashback thing where he has these three women in his past who sort of liked him. And so the title of the play is Harana, the Lady Serenade. Uh, Harana is Filipino for serenade so uh, we thought it was a twist because you know usually it's a man who serenades the woman and uh, and sort of that's that's still what's happening in the Philippines but obviously things have changed and what would be stereotypical courtship is no longer you know like in the rest of the world it's not it's no longer like oh you know it has to be the man who has to reach out and all that kind of thing but we obviously it was a modern modern take on on it nice so he left like maybe two years ago so that was his theme he left two years ago but um, it was around Christmas time that uh, we wanted to focus on because that was his last Christmas before he was left for wow. Australia and it's a usual story where a sibling is here uh, the sibling sponsors him to come and help out in the business, and he has to leave his not his not his girlfriends. He not yet <laughs> because that was the that was the story. So the, the story revolved around those women trying to get his attention, wanting his uh, wanting his love, or you know, and but he kept saying no, you know, and all that. But no, he never told anyone until the end that. He was actually leaving. That's why he can't really make a commitment. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sure there's going to be a lot of viewers like relating to that story. Yes, that's why I was thinking like it's not exclusive to to 
Filipinos because yeah. we've left so many people back at home or back in their countries and we are we have a lot of connections. That's right. Wow. I love that story. <laughs> and I think there's because you know there's gonna be a lot of cultural people watching and I yeah. think every culture will probably connect with that. Yeah, well that's great. I I'm still hoping to put it up on YouTube but I have to make sure that I got the music <laughs> figured yes. out. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see it. That would be good yeah. to see it. And I got to meet the actors, which was really yes. cool. Um, yeah, the like I did a thanks to Roselle, um, encouraged me to do a rap workshop. Um, and the actors were the um, the students. Yeah. And it was really fun to meet them, but I didn't know who was who. But yeah. they gave me, <laughs> like what they gave me, I was really impressed. Um, but yeah, they're a great bunch of kids. Oh, students adults um yeah it was a good mix it was a good mix yeah. it was nice like the the drug one yeah the, we called her we, she was a pharmacist she's a pharmacist so and she rapped on. like because i love drugs <laughs> 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 and I thought, oh wow she's cool yeah yeah so that was funny yeah she's she well that particular actress is funny so she is like that she is by nature really funny but her role that she auditioned for was the serious one, the religious mm -hmm. and the serious one. So I think that's why she wanted that challenge where it's not her, you know, she's not being funny in that, well, the whole play is a bit funny and light, but it's not the character that, that, mm -hmm. that she normally plays. When, she, when people ask her to do something, she's gonna be doing comedy, but for this play, she took on that serious role. And so where did you get these actors from? So it's from that Filipino group who... Oh, so they were already in there. Yes, they were already there. And so that's how they just reached out to me just to write right. the play. And then uh, what happened was I was... So I did write, event, you know, I ended up writing the play with so many changes together with the actors, but we didn't know who was taking on the role. So when the... When the the script was finished I gave it back to them and said here it's the script then you can hold your auditions but let the actors audition for the parts wow yeah so, so you didn't really take all control of it you just wrote it and gave it back to them to well, decide that was, that was the wow. that was that was how it was yeah because okay. usually script writers would just be given that task okay. oh really right. yeah yeah we, we, we wouldn't know who who would take on the role because uh, unless I, unless it, it can happen the other way around, but normally writers would not even meet the actors because it's really up to the director to decide like uh, how it would be delivered. And it's who I was talking to mostly at that time was the one who was supposed to direct. So we, we had a lot of conversation so that the director would understand what I was trying to say in the, mm -hmm. in the script. Okay, so to my understanding, I thought, did you end up directing it at the yes. end? Yes. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why it's that's another story. Confusing. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. you wrote it, and then that was it, and I thought, but I thought you directed it. Yes, so that's the other, that's the additional story to it, that there was an original director who was assigned to, to help with the play, and that was part of the Filipino group. Um, however, what happened was, maybe there was miscommunication or even during the brainstorming probably there was this you know mindset from the director's part that because obviously everyone everyone contributed ideas but whatever came out of the script was the final one i mean if they if they suggested something that i felt didn't really fit or i couldn't make it fit then i didn't force it you know mm -hmm. like oh, oh Maybe an example is they want more people, they want more extras. And the stage was really tiny. It was a six meter by four meter stage. So mm -hmm. you can't have, you, I already, I can't, I can't let go of the four main characters. And that's a lot of characters already. You, what, what the Pip Theater said was, you know, at the time, maybe maximum of four. So I did have five characters, because, but then I made sure that in the story there was 
two at a time and at most three at on stage at the same time because it's hard to move so that part of the thing I I wasn't when I wrote it I wasn't thinking that I was going to direct it but I was already thinking that I needed to help the director and the actors to move in that space without having to trip over someone or mm -hmm. you know especially when the lights are out and then you have to change and move and it's like you don't have that space so that was already in a way my vision of the play and I think that's what it entails as well with script writing that you envision what it would look like wow I wasn't sure if the script writer was the director or the different the different yeah okay yeah so in a when lot you're... of the plays yeah there is uh, um, but there are famous people who you know like uh, maybe an example would be like uh, Hamilton you know, there's the script right. He's the script Lin Manuel, the one who does the Disney, the modern Disney yeah, one, yeah. the one Moana. He, yeah. he okay. did Moana. He's also the songwriter. He's like the arranger. He's oh, like okay. wow. multi-talented. So wow. yeah, and he's he directed Hamilton. He wrote the script. He did. He wrote the songs, and he's like, wow, you know, wow. like how how prolific. But maybe it's easier for him like that. Maybe it just works for him rather than. Be interesting his background. To, yeah. yeah. Have you seen Hamilton? I've heard things, good things no. about it. I've never, I never saw it. Yeah, my son really enjoyed yeah, it, and yeah. he was eleven at that time, and oh, I wasn't really? sure because it was three hours, so yeah, yeah. Year old, to make a kid sit down. But he yeah. enjoyed it because Lin Manuel is Disney, you know, so yeah, he knows okay. how to okay. keep it maybe the energy up, nice. and Moana as well, like you know, yeah. like keep that funny mm. vibe, you know, like you yeah. have that. So it's it's a lot of that. If you're multi talented, you can pull it off. But wow. for, a, for a writer, for example, a lot I've met some writers who probably wouldn't have the temperament to direct. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. writers usually just want, like, this is what I wrote, and I'm, I'm just, I, I work in this space. Mm -hmm. And to have, have to deal with people and tell them, like, this is how you deliver it, that's in, that entails another yeah, different skill. It's good to know that I like, you know, just thinking from a music perspective. Mm. I would just do write and perform it. it yeah. And yeah. I never knew that, you know, thinking as a, what do you call it, film media? Yeah, like. I didn't uh, think did, you write. <laughs> that was Georgie. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> Shout yeah. out to placemakers, <laughs> Georgie. <Yeah. laughs> um, I didn't think that um, train of thought lost. Oh, like you, you. Um, yeah, if you screen write or screen play, sc what yeah, is uh, it called? Play right, yeah. Right, play right. I didn't yeah, think if you play play. right, you pass it on to someone to yeah. get yeah someone uh, someone else to, to direct it. Direct it. Yeah. I mean, uh, what happened was. I thought that, that my script, my job was finished after writing the script, mm. yes. you know, and I was just going to watch once they sort of rehearsed and go back and look at what they've done and all that and maybe tweak a bit. That was my plan. That was mm. the plan. <laughs> I'm so glad, Rosa. You're so good at all these things, you know, every time, because um, I don't know if you know, but I actually met her from Crossing Borders, which was two yeah, years ago. Yeah, yeah. And now our journey has been going like closer and closer. Like we're just doing different stuff every time we see each other. Yes. <laughs> so like when I met her, she was a poet. Yes. And then now she's screen playing. Sorry, okay, um, screen writing. Uh, uh, playwriting. playwriting, sorry. Playwriting, <laughs> no, get it, get it right. <laughs> playwright, playwright. Maybe, um, maybe you keep saying screen, maybe in the future. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's, that's, it, the future. that's the next yeah. project. <laughs> screen, okay, play, playwriting. Because the music is essential to the, to, to the screen. Mm, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. I'm like really happy for, are you happy yeah, for what happened? You. Yes, yes. I, I, I was uh, telling Barry that it was, you know, I wear many hats uh, in every, in my daily life. But so far this hat has been the most fun it wasn't without like frustrate frustration but it was fun because you know it was fun working with actors you've met them so it was fun you know yeah. knowing them and you know it was a different uh 
different experience. And I guess being here in Australia, like you, you, you tend to, you know, um, really interact with very diverse people. So for me to actually go back to a group of Filipinos and young Filipinos at that, it sort of also gave me a different perspective because they're in a different generation altogether. You know, mm -hmm. they, they're very young. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like... And hip oh, and yeah. vibes, <laughs> vibing. Yeah, so when I wrote this script, I had to think that way. Like, oh, yeah. you know, I'm not in, I'm not in their generation, but... Yeah. I had to think that oh, because you know the actors who are going to play are young, um, the language, the what, what they use should be more for their age. That's good. Yeah. But you also gave them a lot of leeway in yes. terms of yeah um, what you call it, like ad living and yeah and because um, they found it a bit one act, one one of them was uh, had experience on stage. And she said to me that with her, with the director at that time, uh, she was directing her like every step of the way. But you know what I've learned at Crossing Borders mm -hmm. is that yes, you can be controlled in that sense, but sometimes if you if you're given that that sort of space. freedom, yeah, yeah, that space, and it comes out more natural rather mm -hmm. than for every. Uh, word mm. on, in a line. Mm. There's a specific action or expression. It's like that. That takes away a lot of that uh, uh, freedom of the actor. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, and the, and you know, like as a script writer, I I expected the actors to read the script. <laughs> so one frustration at the beginning was all these questions coming in, I said, did you read the script? So, you know, all, a lot of, you know, we have a meeting and then they ask us, so what, what's the, what's, what's the, what's going to happen after this when shouldn't, shouldn't this happen and all that stuff? I said, did you read the script? Because you're taking it out of context. So if you read, you know, like even if your role is only for this part, you have to read the whole script so you understand where you are in that role. Not even if you're not playing a role in, let's say, let's say if there were three segments to it. If even if you're only in one segment, you have to read what happens in the next segment so you understand. Mm -hmm. If you're the first, then how do you build that up so that it's connected to the next part? Nice. Not rather than because when you write, like when you write, like when you write a song, it sort of has a flow to it. Yeah. You're telling a story and then except that it's not you who's interpreting it someone else is interpreting it so that that's where how do you say creative differences okay. yeah you know like of course like uh, i think a lot a lot of that challenge is as a script writer you have this vision of what it should look like even the way it sounds you already sort of hear it in your head but then you hear the actor saying it in a way that is not what you envisioned it to be, yeah. but but you you explain to them that okay, let's go through the the context again. What what's the, what's happening at this point? Should you be upset, and how upset should you be? You know that kind of thing, and then you sort of come to a compromise of how far both of you can sort of let go and say that. Of course, we push the actor because the actor has to act. Yeah, but then overacting can also be you know, <laughs> you know you don't want that as well you know so you want them to be uh how do you calm that? acting yeah yeah well, well yeah natural. yeah <laughs> yeah and, natural and, and the yeah the natural and really be in that character which yeah. i think was really i mean even for me that would be very difficult when you you know like how, how do you be in character you need like how many days of like practice, 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 and again, I I think for the young people, it's they don't like to practice every day. <laughs> you know, like even those workshops. So my first two sessions was nothing of the script. It was just about breathing exercises, physical exercises, and I said, okay, these things I'm doing because every day when you wake up or when you're having a shower, just go through that vocal exercises. Mm -hmm. You know, speak, open your mouth when you speak vocalize like because one girl uh, in the, one character had to sing a full song 
but she's a singer so that's an advantage so but then I said you know you have to get into the habit of breathing and exercising before the perform so that by the time we go to the week of the performance it's just natural like you know you don't have to think like okay how do I breathe again you know like it's no longer this like we won't go back to that workshop you know because once we get to the script I would be expecting that before we even go to rehearsals you've done your mm -hmm. exercises yeah. yeah everything else like what we did for crossing borders like those workshops of trust and and copying and moving together with other actors that comes at rehearsals not as an individual yeah. practice yeah I think crossing borders was um I think the way Rosie was trying to teach us, shout out to Rosie, yes. <laughs> placemakers again, who allowed us to do this. Um, it was more of trust yes. and safety. Like, are you safe to tell your story? Yes. Knowing that is anybody else going to um, take a, you know, because some of those yes. ladies were hiding mm. and, yes. you know, they ran from yes. a different country and mm. that's how they got yeah. here. Yeah. So it was like very touchy. Yeah. But you there know, was a lot of tears. There was a lot <laughs> during of tears. There was a lot of like tears. Yeah. Yeah. There was, yeah. it like took every woman in a vulnerable state where they had to rewind. Well, that's like about what we do. That's how we prepare for a performance. Yeah. When we did it, it was sort of like that, where you have to get into your most vulnerable state for you to be able to act out a role, even if it's not technically your story your story mm. yeah because it's a, you're you're an actor you're not um, so it's it's pretty the same because one of the things that that they had to do was uh, what, what one of the actresses said that this is what I do I find let's say someone from the Philippines who she would she, she thinks is the same as her character mm. based on the script and then she she imagines how this person would act it out and then she goes into that zone. Yes. Yeah. So and and that role of hers, she was being funny, but as a person, she said, "I'm not funny. I'm I'm actually a serious person." So, <laughs> so that was the opposite with the other with the other actor, where they had to sort of swap yeah. characters. So she had to get into that, and mm -hmm. I guess part of the role of being a director is to acknowledge that that there is that stage where they have to go through a zone of vulnerability before they can get on stage and say okay this is now my story nice yeah so tell us about the night how how did you feel uh, and and all the adrenaline rush and oh, well I was telling Barry that the week the week prior to the performance we had this major hitch so again I think as as a as someone who wrote the script and also directing, the advantage was because I could see that there was going to be something wrong with one of the scenes because the actor didn't really practice that scene very well. And even if he did, he wasn't, he, again, we're talking amateur actor, so mm. the expectation is not, you know, I can't expect that, you know, to, to like, oh, you know, you have to be, you have to be in character or you lose your job kind of thing we didn't have that we didn't have that opportunity to yeah. get someone else we were close okay? <laughs> we were very close to getting someone else for the role because i've uh i've heard that some people can memorize a script in 48 hours mm -hmm. but that's professional you know yeah. they do that every day it's like yeah. their that's their life so um but for that particular week I already knew that oh, he's gonna he's not gonna wing he's not gonna do it he's not, he can't do it um, we tried and it's not because he's not capable of doing it it's just that because internally he was struggling like mm -hmm. he had these personal issues that he needed to to work on and that wasn't the right time mm -hmm. for him so and the advantage of me being the scriptwriter is that I could change. Then I was allowed to tweak that because who else would change it and nice. make that fit rather than change the actor. Okay, let's find a way to make 
everything still work almost the same, but maybe uh, change a bit of who's going to say what. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we were lucky to have one of the non-major role character. She's a professional actress back in the Philippines. So I called her up and I said, look, we're swapping. Can you do this bit? Um, and instead of him doing the intro, you do it. And she said, that's better. Mm -hmm. I was, I was, uh, uh, we were thinking of actually making her take the male role <laughs> and you know like doing yeah, that yeah. yeah yeah but then she actually laughed at it and said i'll be laughing the whole time don't <laughs> way. and you're only giving me like two days to prepare for it so like no way i'm gonna do that but she said that uh uh you we have to think of something so it, it it's it's not just about the being there on that saturday and as, as you probably can imagine that we could have pulled out could have pulled out and said it's not good to perform if we're not ready right mm -hmm. so and it was a call that was already almost well, there as well you well. know if we can't find someone to replace the actor then we pull out um, obviously the, all the investment with the time and the effort would have gone to waste but I mean, well, in those situations, someone has to make those hard decisions. Mm -hmm. um, but we pulled it off. So I guess it, your question whether, yeah, it, it was something that I wanted to happen. Yes, because it actually was staged. Well so done. that was good. And then with those changes, uh, of course, it was a bit of a disappointment because I really wanted to stick to the original script. Oh, right. And I can't imagine if the, if the director wasn't me. Mm -hmm. And she and that director asked me to change the script. We would have had a fight. <laughs> you know, like, a, again, you know, like you, what you said, you, you write the song, you perform it. Imagine if you wrote the song, someone else performed it, and suddenly they want to make changes on, like, a day before the performance. Imagine how you would feel when she said, I don't want to sing this part. Yeah. Imagine how you'd feel. So I said it was a good thing that maybe I, I took on the role yeah. of director. I think that's a good opportunity for you because then it actually you're learning directing. Yes, I was challenged with that. <laughs> yeah, and it was probably, I guess, my experience with crossing borders helped a bit because it opened my eyes to the possibility that you can trust your actors yeah you know like you, it's not it, yes it's my story and it's my characters but i have to trust my actors that they have to do it yes. i'm sure it doesn't happen in, in major productions because you do have to audition and really be fit for the role mm -hmm. but in this case it was sort of like very fluid you know, like um, the actors were already there, but they didn't know which role where they were going to take. And when I wrote the script, I didn't have a, I didn't know who, who, any of the actors. I, I met them, but I don't know them. You know, I didn't know them at that time. Wow. So uh, it was just by fit, like by looks, and you're like, okay, you know, okay, let's see what they can do. Let them do. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm so happy so, yeah. that like you ended up writing and then you ended up directing yeah. <laughs> and you pretty much took yeah. control of everything. Well, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's uh, I guess, well I, it's a privilege of time mm -hmm. that I was able to pull it off. So, and your, your help as well, that was, I think that was inspirational for the actors because... Oh, was it? That's good. Yeah, yeah they said that, um, they said that that was, was really helpful and you should do more of that. But awesome. we, we were running out of time at yeah. that time. But if we have another project, then it's always... Now we know, you know, like we, we have to start somewhere, right? We yeah. can't just say, oh, we can't do that. Let's not do anything. But when, when can you do it? Without trying, That was the eh? opportunity. Yeah. That was the perfect timing. And it, I guess it just fit all together so good yeah. i'm so glad that i was happy to help and i guess the time. timing that i met you also around that time right yeah when i, I mean we, we knew just each finished. other but uh, yeah we just finished, finished it was just yeah. like perfect timing that you weren't uh, as as 
busy because we produced the recording, but then um, it was still fresh, you yeah. know, that, that, that energy was still fresh for you. So to actually get you in that mentoring mode yeah. was, was just also, I think, perfect. And it taught me too, so it was really good. Yeah. So. It pushed you a bit. Um, I yeah, I had something. Um, yeah, tell me. Tell us about the innovations that you had in the show. You were telling me. Oh, those yeah. changes? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, oh, the changes as yes, well, yes, but yes, um, um, actually I, I, on the night. Yeah, like adapting to. I was thinking more of the. Um, you had an element of food in your, yes, in yes. your show. Tell us about that because that's something I've never heard of before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so. When I was writing the script, uh, obviously the elements of what what a lot of our cultural practices are for Christmas, obviously food, because that's, that's uh, part of it. But um, that wasn't the main thing when I was writing the script. So it was about, okay, what do we do in Christmas? We sing, okay, uh, we sing Christmas carols. Uh, we go to church, you know? So we had to brainstorm those things. And for food, it was, in the brainstorming, it was a lot of food. <laughs> so if you can imagine the props that we would have if I actually did all of that. So, and we simplify, I simplified it because again, I was probably, maybe I had an inkling that I was gonna direct it. That's why the simpler it goes, the, the, the better, to the, the easier to direct. Mm. Because it, let's keep everything simple. Let's make the story come from the actors, not from the props. Mm -hmm. um, but then I was thinking that one of the things that can make the audience more um, relatable to it, because we weren't doing improv, so it was really a stage play where there was not much interaction with audience. So I thought, oh, how can we, how can we make the audience relate more to to the performance, and with the but the, the thing that we had, the food that I thought of at the end was something that could easily be made here. Because the other food that we had had, had special contraptions like the special steamer and all that. With this one, it's just something that can be baked. So uh, I already knew that anyone could make it, so it was easy to get someone to make it for us. So the theater would allow us to serve food as long as it's from a business, uh, and if, if we're not selling it, then that's fine even if it's not. But we thought, well, this is the opportunity to collaborate as well. So we asked one of our um, friends to, can you make this food, which is called bibinka. It's a rice cake. Um, it's, it's, I think, typical a lot in Asia. All Asian countries would have a form of rice cake. And so, and that's in the script that the actors would be eating it. But then the, the idea was we'll have her make it for the actors. Mm -hmm. And then we thought, but you know, if they're already eating it, it's, and the, the theater had an opportunity for drinks because they said that prior to the show, you can have drinks, you buy the drinks from the bar. We said, well, why don't we also serve them? The food that we're talking about on the play so that was great because yeah it, it sort of gave them gave the audience uh, a taste well literally a taste of <laughs> of the food that we would share during that time anyway Christmas time yeah so that was a great uh, experience and because food really is a you know a, a big a significant part of, of our lives so yeah. We thought that they, if they don't remember what the story was, at least they remember what they <laughs> ate. <laughs> the rice cake. Yeah. Yeah. That is, so that's a Filipino food. Yeah, it, it, it's called a rice rice cake, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, our version anyway, because mm. there would be all the other versions of rice cake. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. I've got a visual of a round yes, yes. rice. They're like, like that. Oh, is it a sweet or a... Yes, it's sweet. Okay. No, I'm thinking of um, oh, what the savory ones. Eat. The buns. Yeah. 
Okay, maybe. You know? Never mind. <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking something brown and I thought a green uh, leaf around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah, that yeah, it? Yeah, okay. it, it, it's sort of like a, uh, yeah, it has a green leaf. Usually it's cooked in green um, banana leaves. Yeah. And yeah. then that's how it's served as well. So instead yeah. of a wrapping. That would be so, yeah. that'd be so good. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, could, we could have done that, but then thought that um, it was the first time we were going to use that so we weren't sure if we were allowed to use that type of packaging okay. so oh, yeah and we had to think about how how mm -hmm. so the easiest way was to just get those and then cut get a cake and then have it sliced and let the guests oh, take that's it. A good idea. Yeah, yeah because it's more familiar to them yeah, yeah. and um, and if you find it funny that some people i think uh um i think i don't i don't know when it was when we, we did have those with the green leaf around it, and they asked if we could eat the green leaf. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it, I mean, it's funny to us yeah. because they're like, no, you don't eat it. It's, it. You know, you unwrap it. But yeah, I realized that because it is natural, it is. Yeah. 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 It is an uh, it is a organic wrapping, so maybe it is edible. It'd be hard to yeah. digest. It so. will be. <laughs> well, if you need five, are you probably? Yeah. <laughs> But I tell you what, when you're talking about sweets being wrapped in banana leaves, I'm like, oh, I'm like the memories for me come back, oh, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, that's my yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. I was thinking about sushi. I don't know why. I was like, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh yeah, because it's also rice. Yeah. Something yeah. wrapped yeah. rice inside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what about now? Like, are you going to be writing another play this year or something? Um, I, well, I after that play. One of my contacts from the radio station in Brisbane was asking if I could make that into a radio play. So it's sort of a, I need to rewrite it so that it becomes more detailed in terms of audio because it's a different. Wow. It's a totally different. We, you, you mm -hmm. ca I can't let people just say the words in the same way that probably they were saying it because the intonation makes you know that now this time the, the actor the voice actor should be more uh, mindful that that voice will have um will tell the story itself it's not you know you don't have to worry about your facial expressions but the sound of the voice mm -hmm. and we did we did have difficulty on the stage play in terms of sound effects so we didn't i didn't Get think of any sound effects because uh, I didn't have a sound guy mm. with me who would probably be working out the timing of those sound effects. Like if it was, if the scene was outside the church and it was a church day, then you would have people talking around. So I, I mean, it would have been easy just to grab like talking people, but the timing, you know, and, and putting it on at the same time and trying to work out what what sounds what other sounds would fit in there like christmas carols or bells ringing church bells or whatever it became like you know what it's just too much yep. so i relied heavily on the actors themselves so you can yeah. imagine just like it's like a blank space and then it's just people there no sound just a cappella yeah, yeah and then you just you know you let the audience just imagine what what's going on they some of them did uh, suggest that mm -hmm. some of them did suggest that oh you know what you can do in the future to have a bit more ambient sound mm -hmm. yeah but maybe you know who knows like you can get the the audience to be part of it yeah. you, know? Yeah. You, know, you know like so it, again experiment with something it'll yeah. be good to see where you take your playwright playwright screenplay yeah. well I, I want to do it. Play, uh, it's a stage play. Sorry. Stage. No, no. Oh my gosh! Stage play. Stage. Stage. So yeah, stage it's on play. stage. So I'm I'm hoping to do something here on the Gold Coast because the Brisbane project was, uh, you know, as you you know you you know traveling back and forth is still a bit of a. Yeah. It, it takes too much of your time and the, the energy, but. Um, it was good experience because to to be in Brisbane as well it's it's a good opportunity. But uh, I'm always for local, you know. Like I live here, why am I not 
contributing here. Mm -hmm. I think so. So hopefully, hopefully I can do something that that is more accessible to Gold Coasters because a lot of it, uh, no one uh, yeah it was so hard to get Gold Coasters to go to that place. Mm -hmm. I and I understand because yeah, yeah. yeah you know it's not right. easily accessible so yeah. plus you have to think of parking, traffic, uh, what else, you know, and then you have to eat there and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So it's not, it's, it's like a day trip, you know, yeah, just, just to watch it. Yeah. Right. I think it is important maybe in the future that, you know, we, like, I know everyone loves to go to Brisbane. Yeah. But oh, to perform, you mean? Like, yeah, yeah too, because yeah. they think that's Hollywood up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I reckon yeah. Hollywood's mm -hmm. in the Gold Coast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Well, we're trying to create it, right? <laughs> yes, yes, so. that's, that's, uh, that's why we're doing this. You yeah, know, that's to why. Make it, to make it local and yeah. to have that space. And I think uh, from one of our my discussions with Barry before was uh, it's when you're offered a space that's. Uh, uh, given out of their generosity, you yeah. know, like it's not a business kind of relationship. Then you 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 think you have to think that you know, like it's an opportunity that's already there. And yes, it it may look like it's not as uh, how do you call that really upmarket or what you call that really this polished. Uh, yeah, yeah, polished. Uh, um, kind of production but if you're given that space uh, because that's what I haven't mentioned that that token festival was set up by the owner of the theater itself mm -hmm. who was very generous who's very generous she her advocacy I think is to really offer that type of space for community groups because she offered it for free with sounds lights uh, they paid for the sound guy, the light guy, the light people, and the and the stage manager. So they handled all of that. So if you needed props, so you you bring in your props, they 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 assist you in putting it on, keeping it, and making sure that it, you know like everything's set up and all that. And they were also offering that if you have ideas for props and they may be able to have it because. They're already a theater, so they would have costumes and all mm -hmm. that stuff, extra curtains, extra couches, that kind of thing. Wow. So imagine the opportunity, right? Where you, you can have that without you spending the time looking for the right, yep. the right, the right stage, and that was just perfect. So I guess what, we we need more of those spaces. <laughs> <laughs> Probably but, you're right now. When I think about it, like if that was the opportunity given to you, then it does make sense to take it over yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's yeah. You know. But it's not a lot. I think uh, it's very competitive. I guess. Mm. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when you get the right people, when you're connected to the right people who have the same advocacy as you, then that's probably what, what will work. Yeah. So that's going to be good for you then because now if you want to work on something, they're yes. going to support you. Yes, yes, yeah. That's they, awesome. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully uh, it will also inspire those young uh, aspiring actors or performers to you know, to consider that every opportunity is something that they should seriously take on, take board. on yeah. if, if, if it comes, right? Like, yeah. it's not a time, these days you can't be very choosy because it's, as I've said, it's very competitive. And I think uh, what I learned from all this was that, because I was able to talk to some professional actors, local, local actors, and what they told me was, some actors, especially now, because we have the film industry, you know, then a lot of Netflix and all these mm. um, big movies. So there are a lot of extras, and they get locals for that. So they they get from that group, you know. There's like a, a union, of, you know. There's a group of actors, professional actors, where they can just say, okay, you know, who wants to audition for this and. Uh, so they would 
probably be gatekeepers there, you know, like mm -hmm. you, you just don't show up and all that. If you're part of a actor's guild, then you're sort of a priority. But what one of the actors told me was, if, for example, in your play where I will be the lead role, I would probably take it on, even if you don't pay me, um, even if, it's, if I'm, if I'm going to volunteer to perform because for my resume, I would have that, that mm -hmm. I had a lead role. Yeah. So that exposure is very important. Yes, for them. Right. So, I, and I think for people like um, us who are not in that stage yet where you're really just going through the motions of doing your art, like professionally, it helps to do those things that, that are offered because they won't, he actually said, I'm not gonna say, I'm, I'm not saying no because I don't want that role. I actually would really want it, except that, you know, you, you're giving me three days to make a decision. And, and it's like, I can't just give up my job or something like that, you yeah. know, so for, yeah. for, for one performance. So he was, he was explaining that the industry, some of these young aspiring artists do look out for those little projects. And it's just probably just maybe meeting the right people. I don't know if you, because they wouldn't know anything, right? If there's someone else telling them that this is the only thing that we're giving you projects. Yeah. So, but if someone reaches out to them and says, "Hey, um, there's a small group here who wants actors," then that's sort of you. You you hope that there are more people who would be more generous like that. You know and share the information and keep that open connection that's so good yeah so we're hoping to meet more of those people <laughs> yeah yeah that'd be awesome yeah. so that would be on your next thing for this year for 2024 uh, i guess it's all we, it, we, it, the one for the radio is dependent on the grant so that okay. because uh that's also something i haven't learned but uh the my my uh, contact from the radio station said that because we need a lot of licenses and all that for sound and all that so if you do it independently it's, it's a bit costly you know mm. to come up with that big production but if you're using the resources of the radio station then th the licenses are paid for all uh, and all you probably need to pay for would be the, the, the talent and uh, you know wherever you're probably going to rehearse and all that, mm -hmm. but otherwise, so we, it is dependent on a grant so yeah. that we can get probably the time for actors to do workshops and all that. Nice. So hopefully, hopefully we can get that grant and then I start rewriting. Yeah. Because I'm not gonna rewrite until yeah. <laughs> the grant is that money comes. Yeah, the, mo the money comes. So what do you have to think about when you're gonna rewrite this? Like you said, like the the different dialogue and things. Yeah, like, because the vision when it's visual, mm. it's it's easy in a way because you can compensate. So if if you can't project as as loud, but your face is and your actions are able to compensate for that then it's it's it will work on stage but on the radio there's no on, on audio there's no way to compensate for that like if if you sound monotonous all the way it doesn't work right and if it's like and if you're crying without without sobbing how is that gonna sound you know like why are you crying how are you gonna cry and make sure that the listeners can hear it, or at least feel that you're crying through your words. So that's probably another, that's why we need the grant. <laughs> <laughs> True. So because it, it, it does, yeah, it's is not it going to be a different process for you, like to what you're normally used to in writing? Um, yes, because then that means I have to add more details to the script, like the sound effects that now it has to be particular. like. You know how they do footsteps, you know, I don't know if you've seen those, yeah, yeah. they may just doing da 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 and that's a footstep, and then uh, making sure that that's what the sound that you want, mm -hmm. so, or if it's a, if it's a, for example, like what I said, that outside the church scene, what are the sounds that I want people to hear? Is it just people talking, 
but how would they know that we're outside the church without having to say it every line that we are outside the church, we're outside the church, you know? Yeah. So how do you, can you imagine that, like every line, oh, because we're outside the church. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you, you, those things that I now have to think, and I, yeah, that will have to, it's an exercise of the brain. Uh, and I'm not, I guess the audio part, I'm not very good at, so I might need help. That's why we need the grant. <laughs> yeah, because I in, might need help. In your general process of writing, are you more visual then? Than voice of yeah, writing? yeah, I'm more visual. So the sounds come because of, you know, I can in, envision someone saying it. So, yes, more about that. Not so much about, like, what's the voice like or what's the crying like. I, I probably need to work on that. <laughs> oh, because I wouldn't know, like, when you record something, like, uh, you would probably be more familiar because those tiny details of voice and sound makes a lot of difference to a recording. Well, that's what I was going to ask. I was going to ask, so does that mean you have to go to a recording studio and yes. just record it? Yes, mm -hmm. okay. that's, what, that's why we need the grant. <laughs> I keep going right. back. It's, yeah, these things, I think these projects, I'm sure like a school, you know, if you were, if we were at school, you could do it, you know, like, because I, I, I think I remember first ever doing a recording with a radio drama when we were in high school and we used really basic stuff. You know, but we, I remember having um, a record of sound effects, you know, back in the day when you can only get like, and I don't know which company it was, but it had all the different sound yeah. effects, you know, like it would, I should have kept that because it, it's like <laughs> an antique thing. All the sound effects were there, like airplane, cars, footsteps, horse steps, you know, mm -hmm. animals. Yeah. And so I got, I was into that for a project that we made with my high school, you know, a high school group. And then in university, because I was, uh, I took up communications, which was more of like um, a diverse, it wasn't specific to journalism or any of that. So we went through a lot. So we, every, every unit was like, okay, one in film, one in theater, one. So we all went through those stages. So radio production. And my experience on that radio production is I was one of the actors voice actors so I wasn't really involved in creating that sound effects recording and all that someone else was doing that for us but we were there obviously because when we had to listen to it we had to put, give our input on what, what would be the best way to, to create that nice. story in a play and we were lucky actually that our professor at that time was a uh, was from the BBC Radio. Wow. He, his experience, yeah, he was working with the BBC Radio in England, so he was English. He was, uh, he was doing. It, 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 it was a great experience because we, you know you weren't worried about grades; you were just worried about creating. Yeah. And I thought that was one of the best experiences in school that I've had. That you know you're not worried about like passing it because you failed. So once you be creative and let your creativity out, then the professor will see that and see that, oh, you know, like you, did, you did well, you know. Good work. That's why it was nice. Yeah. <laughs> I wish life was like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, True. nobody sort of grades you that you pass or fail, you know, that's that, that kind of thing. So are we doing anything else besides um, playwright, play, stage plays? Um, are we doing any other little projects on the side as well? Uh, well, more, 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 what I'm focusing more now is doing a bit of storytelling, storytelling. Uh, which uh, we, we started way back in 2022. Yes, yes. So, and I thought that if I build on that, because it's something that I can integrate both um, from my culture and as, as what you've seen in the play, where that yeah. story is not exclusive to our culture it's it's also a story that uh, a lot of people would relate to so although it's the story that I I will say I will tell will be very Filipino but I have to really also make it more relatable to a wider audience mm -hmm. 
so that's the plan. So I, I'm thinking that uh, I might encourage more of my um, the people in the acting group, the ones that group, to help me out with that. And yeah. we collaborate and we do a bit of that. And hopefully with the technical bits and we get uh, other other actors who are not necessarily Filipino to engage because uh, as you know, like the like if you go to Asia, it's all also a bit of an expat kind of life. Like a lot of the major cities would have a lot of expats. So if you talk about contemporary stories, then there would always be interactions and even historically, you will have interactions mm -hmm. with the Spanish, with the Americans who all came to take yeah. over some of the countries yeah. of that region. So it's like this, you know, that there's always a possibility that we can get someone else to, to be part of a, of, a, of a performance. Yeah, it'd be good, eh? To yeah, yeah. Other cultures to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. And how do you like, especially with the the play being used for Rome? How, how do you like to pre like present culture? Um, there are uh, there are obviously many different ways of presenting my culture, uh, but for me, because I now live here, I I, I and probably I've learned um, to adapt in a way. Uh, to the new home that I've, I've, I'm living in now. It's also sharing that experience. And then from a perspective of what we used to do in the Philippines and then what my experience is here now. So as, as for example, that play where it was about the migrant. So I wasn't focusing on all these uh, very I, I don't know what the term is when you say traditional because they, we all have traditions that can be contemporary or really ancient traditions. Mm -hmm. So, and some ancient traditions do come in, but not not in not very strongly anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah, for example, we have to uh, in the Philippines when you meet an elder, you take their hand and you put them put your hand on their rear forehead and you say manupo, which I think is also taken from the Chinese but I wouldn't you know that's something that we still do but obviously it's connected to something more ancient than that mm -hmm. so and I don't want to oversell that ancient tradition so and because we do the manopo but we also do the kissing and hugging and all that which again for Fili some Filipinos it's not it, it, that's not our culture to hug okay. and to you know do that it's like we're always like this that's why we just take the only people who will take a hand is a, an older person. Um, so, but the hugging now happens. So, yeah. then you in the play I had to put that in because that's how that's how it is now. Mm -hmm. So, in in that sense, I am putting in a cultural spin because we do have some distinct uh, traditions that are there, like food, for example but without really hard selling that in terms of I should look like what is Filipino attire kind of thing. You know, I, sh I don't have to wear that, you know, to be able to share what my culture is. Yeah. But there is a space for that and I appreciate it. And you, you, I mean, I'm surprised that there are things that I just learned about the Filipino culture when I moved here, <laughs> you know, like things that, oh, you know, never, no one taught me that yeah. when I was in school in the Philippines or when I, even as a grown up, you know, like you, you weren't taught that. Maybe these are things that people take for granted when yeah. they're, you know, maybe here is the same, you know, like people take things for granted here. And then when you suddenly live somewhere else, you realize that, oh yeah, that's what we do there. Or somebody points it out to you and mm. says that, Oh, that's what happens there in Australia. He said, "Oh, yeah, you're right. You know, like that—that that is what what they do there, but we don't really think much about it. So something like that. It's more of of um, just being being present. You know, like the present day. And I wouldn't mind doing a bit of historical uh, projects. Maybe putting a little bit of history in in some of them, but um, 
it, it takes a different type of research and more time probably if you get more grants for those things <laughs> it may be worth it yeah but to to really go deeper in terms of culture aside from just dancing and singing and uh, cooking that's probably like what we say they're all those superficial things like cooking and what you wear and what you it although I have to say that they're not superficial for the actual people who still practice those mm -hmm. because it is the daily life like mm -hmm. uh, like indigenous people that's da their daily life it's not something that you only do when you're asked to do it to perform it you, it's every day they live it yeah, yeah. and that's real culture yes yeah, yeah. yes yeah absolutely yeah, yeah i mean i love the way you um you write and you um have those stories that are relatable to to everyone different people yeah. so yeah, yeah thank you yeah so good are you going to talk about the art book? yeah uh, so, yep. so yeah moving on from what this year we've got an art potluck yes. starting very soon yes. is that right what, yes. when's the next one uh on the 25th of, of, yeah, Feb of, on the 25th okay. of this yeah. month yeah of february yep. and we and that's a yeah, that's the first potluck of the year. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. that's part of a bigger event that uh, we were able to to again because of that opportunity came last year, where uh, a community gallery in Rabina always opens it for for community groups. So I guess we because we we, we don't really keep an eye on those things, but. Or, or we're just aware of all these places where you you're able to do that and then when you inquire you sort of like get that I guess you need a bit of confidence to really ask and be ready for a rejection right like because when I applied what the rule was for the Robina community gallery was it has to be from diverse groups it can't be a one person oh, exhibit yeah. 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 so True because it is a community gallery. So then I thought, well, I'm not a one person exhibit, you know, <laughs> like I'm, I'm not even a visual, a, a visual artist. So there's nothing really I can <laughs> put in the space. But then I just applied. I just said, look, um, Art and Potluck, we've done this, the potluck events every month in different art spaces or community spaces. And um, maybe we can be, having an exhibit so I just put the application in and then that's it and then when they approved that they said oh you're gonna be in February you have that slot 14 days then that's when I started working <laughs> like okay oh, no, start the work <laughs> yeah and then you, you do the call out to the group and say like artists and all that so um, in a way it was easy because I knew that I didn't have to make any artwork. Yeah, <laughs> I just have to get those people, you make artwork for the exhibit, you know, like, or, <laughs> or if you have existing art, then let me know with, with what particular kind of art you're doing. Um, and I discovered that some of our regular attendees were actually artists, visual artists, which yeah, they I never... No, 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 we were... Um, yeah, sorry, for those that don't know, like the, oh, yes, the yeah. art potluck, like the, I first yeah. ran into it, you sent out an invitation and I read art potluck yes. and I was sold immediately, like yeah. potluck was there, <laughs> yeah. so I knew, knew what the, the yeah, food yeah. interaction, yes. then art in that environment, I thought, oh, this is, this is yeah, an amazing thing. Yeah. And it people. was in now, that art gallery yeah. as well, yeah, yeah. And I thought, okay, I don't know what this is about, but yes. I'm going. <laughs> as long as there's food. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I made a, a, a dish to share and um, everyone else brought food in yeah. and it was in that um, pottery gallery. Sculpt like sculptures, gallery, sorry, yeah. sculptures gallery. And um, there was all different work. So yeah. I got in there a little bit early and I just had a look around at um, other yeah. people's works there. And then um, I think, I still didn't know what to expect yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and but I feel like you the, the thing about it was giving people opportunity to um, 
to be there, perform, or um, be exposed to art. Um, mm. And yeah, it, it was amazing. So tell, tell me where you got the inspiration from and what it, what it really yeah. is. <laughs> so uh, 20, when did I get involved with the multicultural space? It was 2016, when, uh, 2016, 2017. So I was looking around for multicultural groups or any group that I thought was more of uh, concerned about making people feel more welcome. Mm -hmm. And it was in Southport where I found a card that said Welcome Dinner Project. And then I looked it up, Welcome Dinner Project was a, a project where uh, a, a community host, which is someone's home, someone who lives in the neighborhood, to offer their home for a dinner, inviting everyone else in the area, um, especially the new arrival, the new, new um, migrants or refugees. So that was a concept that uh, obviously was brought about by an experience from someone in Sydney. So I just thought, oh, it's already something that they're doing, maybe I can get onto that. So I did volunteer for that, and we were able to hold events like that here on the Gold Coast for a while until COVID hit. And then, but the concept is the same uh, that I adopted, which is everyone just attends and bring food that they are willing to share with people and then they can share a story about the food or because in itself making the food can be a story in itself or where that food came from what inspired you to write the, uh, to bring that food uh, what it entails to make that food um, is it trinkets yeah yeah because yeah. we, we you know you don't think that way we didn't want to buy anything yeah yeah you know because we weren't sure where we were going to live we didn't know where what you know what type of Christmas tree we would want, so yeah, that was great. So it started being a bit more visual. I've never thought that I would get into yeah. those things. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Uh, are we recording? Okay. Oh, yeah. um, oh, so the the dinner, the welcome dinner. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I can see you again. <laughs> That's all right. Um, so let's pick up from. Um, Oh, the concept, I think, the concept of the potluck. Yeah, yep, okay, yep. St so that's where the potluck concept came from, the welcome dinner project. Is that where I started? How, how, do Sorry, you, I how, how should we do this? Like, should we just cut it from me asking a question again? Um, oh, okay. Or you want to just... Um, I'm fine. Oh, I'll get it, I'll get it on there. You okay. mean the question will be there, right? Uh, you, you know no, what? No, no, so that because... We were cut in the middle of the yeah i reckon we should just go from like now so sorry we just had a technical difficulty there yeah. um <laughs> but uh results continue on yeah. on, uh, on the journey of um how so our potluck came potluck. about yeah so as um i was saying earlier that uh it came from that concept of another group and then we were able to uh have a few of those events in people's private homes for a while, for a few years, but then COVID hit and obviously that couldn't happen. Mm -hmm. And when things sort of went back to normal, we were invited by one of the art galleries in Surfer's Paradise to hold poetry night. So that's where that poetry came in and um, uh, we were, he, the gallery manager wanted to do a bit more multilingual. so okay, let's uh, do a bit more of that diverse language kind of poetry. And it was in the art gallery. And the art gallery is not uh, is not an exhibit by exhibit kind of place. It was a community gallery. Uh, every day, it was just different artists. So it was sort of already a community space in a way, because the artists also our community, so there were like 15 artists in that gallery. But we did the poetry to obviously get people to engage with the gallery. And for a while it did, but then how much more can we keep doing poetry? <laughs> <laughs> to and the getting, same and, yeah, and getting, yeah, to the same audience. And 
uh, Rana, Rana was there mm -hmm. for a while, but we both said that we can't, we don't have like volumes and volumes of poetry, you know, like we can't, and we have to repeat some of the poems <laughs> that we've said. So you can't, uh, it didn't work out. And later on, you know, we didn't have any audience and we tried um, uh, again and we just thought, you know what, uh, we, we just do it among ourselves. Maybe we don't even have to do poetry. Let's just sit together and spend storytelling, you know, be at the table. So it turned out that it was also the end of the year that we started that. And I said, why don't we do a potluck at, your, at the end of year event for the gallery? Have your artists, invite your artists to come and we'll have we'll invite some poets as well and see see how if we can do performance. So what happened was few of the artists came maybe because the concept wasn't really clear to them. Like why why do we have to go there? Uh, it, it was sort of we were saying we were celebrating the end of the year, so it's just good to gather around. Nothing to do with our project was more of a gathering of people who just want to sit down and eat food. So it was very spontaneous. Everyone who came uh, were, were able to tell a bit of their story. So, with some of the artists who came explained, you know, looked at the artwork and they explained what their practice was. Some who were not artists, but um, just wanted to party, said that I'll teach you dancing, you know? <laughs> and so she stood up and said, oh, well, I can, you know, we can dance. I'm, I, you know, she's not a good dancer, but she just wants to dance. So she got, <laughs> she got us up at the, on the table and then uh, out of the table and then we started dancing to the music and then th that was it. And um, I think uh, some people did sing. So uh, it, it, it's spontaneous, no one, no one knew that we were just there because we, we thought that it was an art gallery. It was a space for, uh, to stimulate that kind of creativity in, in, in the people. So we, after that, we said, why don't we do that every month and still allow people to perform? Mm -hmm. So the gallery manager said, sure, you know, like you're happy for you to do that because if that gets people in the gallery, that's just the best thing. And uh, yeah, it, it, it was because some people actually bought some stuff and people started telling people about the gallery. You know, this is the gallery, there are different artists there. Every three months they change a bit of their artwork. Um, you, you, there's a chance for you to meet the artists. Uh, but I guess with the change of the artists came that like it's hard to sustain it. So we thought we can't be stuck with this venue anyway. We have to also allow ourselves the freedom to do it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and my husband, Andy, started calling out to the different galleries. Private galleries are very difficult to be, to be in, but those which are more community-based, like the sculptors and the potters, uh, they allowed us to use their space. So our first year-end uh, art potluck was there in 2022. And they were happy, you know, they really enjoyed the concept. Uh, it allowed people to see what was in the gallery without um, having to force people to come in, which it, it's, it's hard to do, but because you're forcing them to eat there, then they're forced to look at the artwork <laughs> <laughs> and talk to the manager or talk to the host. And what we do in those uh, particular spaces is that we allow the host uh, allow the manager or the owner of the gallery to welcome us as well, you know, because it's their space and they can talk about who, what they do. And then the idea is not really so much about that art. It's just like bringing people together where if you're not comfortable coming up with, you know, just sitting in a restaurant and talking to strangers, then there's always something to talk about, like the food that you brought that in itself is could be something that is the start of a conversation or an artwork that you see on the wall or that somebody brought with them. And then it becomes a talking point and it becomes a common experience for everyone who attended that event. And that already is the 
what we aim to have like a sense of just being with people especially after covid where yeah. you were told not to share food with anyone <laughs> at the dinner table you know like in restaurants like yeah. you know two meters away this much space and then the next table is over is there you know like you, it doesn't it you know it doesn't yeah. feel right mm -hmm. so it came to us that well we're allowed to do that now then let's build on it again and we we'll, we we'll still want art to be accessible we want art to be part of it whether it's performing arts or visual arts or music or uh, storytelling and for me i think anyone can tell their story yeah. like um and my husband always says that it's like passing the stick you know passing the stick it's your turn and then it's that opportunity where you can say things and you won't be judged no one's going to interrupt you no one's you know once you're given that stick which is a microphone in our case it's your space it's your time and you can sing you can dance you can do whatever you want and or simply just talk introduce yourself if, it, if that's what you're comfortable with just even saying hi my name's Roselle I'm from Benoa I'm originally from the Philippines and I'm happy to be here yeah we, we do get that as well we do get that and that's enough you know and then there's interactions everywhere and I guess that's what makes people feel like oh it's okay to be in a space with strangers mm -hmm. and you're not too worried about what they would think yeah, yeah I think the one of the things I love about it is that um, when people uh, do start sharing their stories it inspires you to, to get up and um, share yeah. something of your own and that's yeah. definitely something that you're into and, yeah. and and thank you for creating those opportunities for people to do that yeah yeah, yeah thank you I, I, I mean I'm, I guess it's just one of the things that because I have that privilege to know things what's going on on the Gold Coast mm, that's <laughs> and to find those connections and to just be open uh, a lot of the times i think uh from people i know who probably have been here like uh, from the philippines especially is that they tend to think that you can you can't do much you know because you you're you're limited by what probably is what your jobs you know like uh, the jobs but then you can see now that even if these actors like these actors have day jobs Right, they they and they what, some of them have jobs and they were taking up uh, uni courses yeah. or TAFE courses, so they had this multiple stuff going on in their lives, um, but they found the time to rehearse. Yeah. So you would you know maybe I guess it's that if your mind is open to those, you will find time. It will never mm -hmm. be. And you will find the space, you will find that place, you will find a person who will be able to help you with something that you probably gave up on yeah. a while back. So I guess that's the mindset I have and to keep to keep it going and sharing that privilege because I, I think that's a privilege to have that, to, to be able to say that, oh, that's someone I want to meet. You know, that's a place probably I'll keep an eye on and see what possibilities are there uh, and I want to share that and yeah. because I'm not the, always the one who has to be there I remember someone asking me like oh if we if we ask your group um, to to perform let's say in my restaurant like in Brisbane um, would you be interested and I would it was saying to her that look I we're friends I said you know I'm, I'm thinking that you're thinking that I'm going to perform I'm I might say no because first it's in Brisbane again and I'm like no uh, I want I probably will know someone who I can help to perform mm. at your so these things where I'm not gonna shut her down and just say that because I can't perform then that's it I'm not gonna talk to you about it anymore I would probably think of someone else to connect her with and then maybe I don't even have to do anything after that but at least I didn't close that door yeah. as far as that uh, thing is concerned. So 
Yeah. I was just thinking something then when um, you were telling your story um, and you've and you're portraying like you've got confidence and skill uh, one of the things I'm gonna start doing on these podcasts is ask really vague questions <laughs> so interpret it any way you want um, but so my vague question to you is what's your secret that is a big question. I think it's not a secret, my age. Okay. <laughs> you know, I think uh, I, uh, I'm thinking if I was in my 20s or 30s, would I be putting myself out there? You know, that's uh, probably like with this project as well, with, with uh, crossing borders that was a reflection actually I had in the process of those 12 weeks that we were doing the workshops it was difficult because I was thinking either I'm too old that I don't fit in this group it's like all these questions so so there's it's not like you just do it because it's there it, it you know the process it itself can be hard and it, I was also about to quit Mm -hmm. um, because I was telling Rana, the one who was who invited us to join, that was, I don't, I don't know if I fit in there. But when, when I think, I thought about that. When is this going to happen again? When will this opportunity happen again? Then I sort of said, okay, you know what? I'll just risk it. Um, whatever happens. So maybe that is a secret because it's always this fear obviously comes and I think it's natural with everyone and the fear of failing, like, oh, you're not meant for that, which is always going to happen. It's not, it's not like I'm going to say that you should not fear, you know, like, no, every mm -hmm. time it will yeah. always be that big question mark, like, am I good enough? Am I good enough? But then I probably changed the question to when am I going to have this opportunity again? Mm. And if I think that I will, then maybe I'll say no to this one and open myself to the next one. But if I think that I will never have this opportunity again, then I'll say yes. Because it may only happen once and that's... So I guess it's one thing that really helped me maybe move forward from project to project because it's like I guess it's a philosophy in life, right? You do yeah. things that you you as if tomorrow is not gonna be there because this may be the last time you'll be able to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I love your hustle. Yeah, <laughs> and weird. just go 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 and and failure. Yeah, failure is is hard to take, <laughs> and maybe because I'm old and have had so many failures in my past. So this is like, oh, you know, like what's another failure? <laughs> you know, like it, it, it's not, it's, I guess when you're young, you always feel that, you know, I just want to do things because I love doing it and I want to do it properly, but then what is the proper way? Yeah. And if you say no to something where it's something that may not happen again, then just say yes. Otherwise it may not happen again and you've already missed that chance. So I yeah. guess that's a, that's a not so secret secret. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely gonna take that on board. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's good. I like how you say, because I forgot to say you're the community builder. Oh, and well, that's yeah, the what connection, yeah. I really see you do, cause you're dabbing into everything and you're finding opportunities, but you're networking also yeah, with everyone. Yeah. So that's in that's I'm taking that one with me because oh, that's yeah. inspirational and that's gonna motivate me to not be afraid yeah. and and just take that opportunity, get out there, do what you can, even if it's like you know, if it's not serving your purpose, it could be serving others. So yes, mm -hmm. yes. Thank exactly. you for yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. So yeah, we've taken stuff away from you. Yep. Um, we've got to promote Art Potluck. Oh yes. Twenty fifth of February. Yes. Um, we'll put some links down the bottom. Yeah. Um, yep. And 
We thank you, Rizal, yes. for yeah, thank you so much for this fabulous trip. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you for making waves on the Gold Coast. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and surfing over it. Yeah. Yeah. Surfing over it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can learn how to surf. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's it for our um, episode with Roselle Tene Francia. Yes. Um, and maybe, what, two weeks you'll see it or one week? Yes. Anyway, well, you'll see it so out you'll there. See it. You'll see it out there, okay? Um, don't we're, forget. Yeah, oh, yeah. Art Lock, Art Lock, sorry, <laughs> Art Potluck Project on yes. February 25th. Um, if they want to find you, Roselle, where can they find you? Oh, well, just on Facebook. Uh, it's called the Art Potluck Project. And on Instagram as art uh, dot potluck. Yeah, pretty easy. Yeah, art and potluck. Yeah, nice. mean combination. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, can I just ask if you could give um, our viewers one thing before you go, um, what can you say to them? to inspire them for making waves? Well, uh, hmm. maybe my secret then. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're gonna have the secret. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I guess it's, it's simply get to know your community, right? Really know what, what's happening out there because that's the best way to see yourself in. Uh, like it's not so much it, 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 while you know what you can do you also have to know where you are in in the space that you're working in and you you have to support that and see how that community can also support your your practice thank you well you heard it from roselle and her friends <laughs> and we'll see you on the next episode of making <laughs> waves Oh, we're doing yeah. that. <laughs> yes, yeah. do it again, Barry. Making, Making waves. waves. <laughs>